One of the liver's most important roles is to protect us from toxic substances we might swallow. Once a substance is absorbed from the intestines, the circulatory system takes it directly to the liver. The liver biotransforms and conjugates molecules to make them more water-soluble. Water-soluble molecules are more easily excreted by the kidneys and through the bile duct. Unfortunately, the liver also protects us from many drug molecules that we give orally. In many cases, only a small fraction of the original drug makes it through that first pass through the liver. For example, for every 20 molecules of nitroglycerin given by mouth, only one makes it past the liver to reach the rest of the body. One strategy to overcome the first pass effect is just give a lot of the drug, with the idea that while most of it won't make it through the liver, enough will get through to treat the patient. For example, when treating heart rhythm disturbances, we may give up to 10 times more propranolol by mouth than we really need. Most of the propranolol is removed by the liver in the first pass, but enough gets through to the heart to control the rate. The remaining strategies usually involve trying to go around the liver by introducing the drug into the circulation at some point where it reaches the tissues before having to go through the liver. Giving a drug intravenously is the most common route. Drugs given intravenously are carried by the circulation through the body first before they go through the liver. Ibutilide is a class three antiarrhythmic that is only given intravenously because only about 3% of the drug survives the first pass through the liver when given orally. The problem with intravenous dosing, of course, is that it's a very inconvenient way for patients to give themselves drug. So other ways have been developed of reaching the systemic circulation without going first through the liver. Some drugs can be absorbed through the skin and can bypass the liver that way. Nitroglycerin is commonly given as a transdermal patch or a topical ointment, both to bypass the first pass effect of the liver and to provide continuous flow of drug into the body. Some drugs that are available in oral forms are also available in dosage forms that bypass the liver. In those cases, the dose is often dramatically lower for the parenteral route. Estradiol is used to treat postmenopausal symptoms at an oral dose of 0.45 to 2 milligrams per day. When used in the transdermal formulations, the dose of estradiol may only be 0.025 to 0.1 milligrams a day to achieve the same results. Estradiol is available in a vaginal ring formulation that also bypasses the liver. The vaginal dose of estradiol is 0.05 to 0.1 milligrams per day, similar to that of the transdermal form. The biggest advantage of the vaginal ring is that it can be inserted and left in place for three months without having to redose. Nicotine undergoes extensive first pass effect. The most common way of getting nicotine to bypass the liver is to use heat to vaporize it and absorb the drug through the lungs. This is, of course, commonly known as smoking. Nicotine can also be absorbed through the oral mucosa using the nicotine gum or through the nasal mucosa using the nasal spray. Not all drug absorbed from the intestines goes straight to the liver. Drug that's absorbed from the rectum only partially goes through the liver. However, most of the time, drugs that are given rectally are given for reasons other than trying to avoid the first pass effect. Promethazine is available both as an oral tablet and a rectal suppository for the treatment of nausea. However, you can imagine the difficulty a very nauseated patient might have swallowing a tablet as opposed to using the rectal formulation. So while we probably wouldn't survive very long without the liver standing guard to remove toxic substances absorbed from the intestines, we often have to make an effort to bypass the first pass effect to get the medicines where they need to go.